Hello, YouTubers, and welcome back to Go Figure Customs YouTube channel. Uh, you might have seen my last video that I put up uh, saying, basically thanking everyone for uh, pushing me over 1,000 subscribe, sus subscribers to my YouTube channel. Uh, that s just blows me away. Uh, I pretty much did this channel, um, started it just kind of like for action figure reviews and some like putting out, I uh, started as a tutorial for um, how to make card backs for your custom action figures because I card all of my custom figures. Uh, and every time I put one up, somebody asked me how I made the card and would I make a card for them? Um, I do do commissions for cards, but since I'm away a lot, I don't have a lot of time to do it. And usually when I'm home, I don't want to help other people I don't want to spend time on other people's projects. I want to spend time on mine uh, just due to my limited time home. So no offense, but uh, I figured if I could teach you how to do it, that would be better than uh, me doing it for you um, because it's not that hard. The hardest part is just having a copy of Photoshop, quite honestly. Um, but uh, that isn't what this video is about. This video is about uh, reviewing, uh, a, well, basically two figures but pretty much just one figure, honestly, uh, from a Kickstarter that came out that was, the Kickstarter was uh, almost five years ago. Um, and it is the Eagle Force Kickstarter. Uh, if you had backed this, uh, you know the insane amount of trials and tribulations that uh, has gone through this, and it just pretty much every step of the way, something has gone wrong with uh, everything that could possibly gone wrong has gone wrong for uh, the the guy that put all this together. Um, a gentleman by the name of uh, Bill Murphy, who was a guest of ours on uh, the General Geekery podcast when we were doing just audio-only podcasting um, while the Kickstarter was live. Uh, as a matter of course, anybody that wants that's doing a Kickstarter that needs wants some promotion, free promotion, uh, if you're striking out on your own, we're always happy to uh, host people uh, that are doing even uh, customizers or people that are doing Kickstarters and want a little bit of promotion. Uh, we'll have you on the show, man. Uh, just let us know. Uh, send me a um, comment below or uh, find us on Facebook, uh, either in General Geekery or my Facebook page, my customizing page, or JD's page, and just say, hey, um, I want to be on the show. I've got this product, and we are happy to let you pimp your wares. But anyway, um, this Kickstarter got funded. Uh, I think it met some of its stretch goals. I don't remember. It's been so long ago. And then it just ran into endless amounts of trouble um, from factories uh, ripping off the, the guy that's running it to just COVID-19 even threw a monkey wrench in it. Uh, nobody thought this would see the light of day ever, um, but here we are, and with figures in hand. So hats off and congratulations to Bill Murphy. I am, both myself and my co-host are uh, ecstatic that you were able to get this done. This has to be just like, like a Herculean effort to uh, have this finally complete. So we're happy for you uh, that you were able to get this done, and let's have a look at... Uh, what we, where did I set it? There it is. Uh, what we've got here for my particular Kickstarter, I ordered four of the Riot Commandos. Uh, it was one particular package, and I like the figure enough um, to get it. So uh, if you're not familiar with Eagle Force, I probably should have gone into that before I started reviewing the figure. Eagle Force was a, a, a line in the very early 1980s, about 1981, 1982. Um, it was kind of an analog to G.I. Joe. It uh, had the same kind of premise. It was a specialized military force, uh, good guys versus bad guys, specialized military force fighting a terrorist organization bent on world domination. Um, so very much, <coughs> excuse me, G.I. Joe versus Cobra kind of thing. Except the toys were uh, two and three quarter inches tall and die cast. So that was the big, um, big difference between G.I. Joe and, and um, Eagle Force. Uh, most of the Eagle Force guys were in a were painted uh, gold as kind of a, a thing. And then the 
bad guys were kind of black and red, I think, if I remember right. I don't remember. It's been so long. I didn't have any of the figures myself. Um, as a kid, I, I think my co-host might have had one or two. I don't know. I'll have to ask him. We talked about that on the show four and a half years ago. Um, but this is the one I picked up. Uh, well, hang on a second. Let me finish. I guess we're not quite done with Eagle Force yet. Uh, so it was produced by uh, Mego. Uh, and then they went tits up about 1982. They got one one wave of figures out and had a second wave planned. But I don't think the second wave got released. So there was a whole bunch of characters and um, pre-existing material out there that was ready to get released that just didn't make it. So uh, Bill was able to get the license for Eagle Force uh, and decided to make these in uh, one eighteenth scale or G.I. Joe compatible scale. Uh, and the the figures that he showed on the pre on the Kickstarter looked awesome. It looked great. I was happy to see you know new new 118 scale figures uh at that point in time i was back in pretty much any kickstarter that was doing 118 scale figures because i'm still kind of convinced that aside from that you, you're going to see new figures in this scale um one of two ways now in the future you're going to see them in small batch toy companies like hyatt toys and joy toy figures um or you're going to see them in kickstarters um through like boss fight and marauder task force <clears throat> Hasbro has pretty much given up the notion of 118 scale action figures aside from uh, occasional Star Wars figures and the crappy reissued um, G.I. Joe retro line, which to me is just garbage, but that's, again, just my opinion. Um, so I, I think that's where the future of 118 scale figures is, is going to be is small batch toy companies and Kickstarters. So I backed it. Uh, um, even though it was not a property that I, I was intimately familiar with, but uh, I had to, I, I jumped on board on this one. Um, so here's the, the packaging, I guess. We'll look at the front real quick. And I'll read all the stuff off here real quick, but let's just have a look at it real quick. So there's a list of figures here. And I don't know, I honestly don't know what figures got made because I know they didn't make all of their stretch goals. So I don't know what figures are are and are not coming out but uh with them making their with this getting produced um we shall see once all the uh kickstarter pre-orders are uh fulfilled what will be available on a retail website and uh, he's selling these through www.freshmonkeyfiction.com uh, and i have looked at the website um, just to see if there's like a uh, price point on the figures. Um, and he, it says the figures will be up in July. So a couple more months on that. Uh, I don't know what the price point will be. Um, I'm guessing, I won't even speculate. Let's just not even go there. So on the back, we've got um, the long retired Captain Eagle is recruited back into active duty by his former teammate, General Brown. Together, they enlist a new generation of Eagle Force team members to <clears throat> combat the re-emerging forces of Riot, a terrorist organization driven by desire for total global domination. Riot versus Eagle Force. Uh, experts at many forms of the latest military weaponry, the Riot commandos undergo an aggressive training regime, then go through significant conditioning and preparation for the uh, for using proprietary Riot technology. Many commandos rise from the shock trooper ranks, but many others still are personally sought out and hand-selected by upper echelon riot leaders, uh, specifically for their willingness and their ability to do whatever riot requires. Uh, Eagle Four, uh, riot commando, terrorist, elite terrorist operative, uh, quote from Captain Eagle says, uh, these guys aren't just terrorist cannon fodder, they are a force of nature personally recruited, honed and prepared for the exact type of conflict they'll be instigating. Ego Force must be prepared to deal with them. Uh, the figures that are available on the back, we've got Captain Eagle, the leader of Ego Force, Stryker Jr., who's a sniper, sharpshooter, the cat, who is the espionage expert, Fireball, which is uh, pyrotechnic sabotage, so it looks like uh, one of the bad guys, Firebug, a pyrotechnic infantry for Riot. 
uh, the Riot Commando, uh, Riot Shock Trooper, and the Eagle Force Trooper. Uh, the Eagle Force Trooper looks pretty cool. I think I'm going to have to get one of those. And then um, some credits and then some, uh, you know, uh, warning about not for children under three and such like that. Uh, on the front, we've got uh, Riot versus Eagle Force, Riot Commando, Elite Terrorist Operative, the Roving, uh, uh, Riot stands for the Roving International Organization of Tyranny. They wreak havoc and chaos worldwide. All right, so that's uh, the packaging. Uh, packaging's always one of three things that I, I, uh, I talk about uh, during any figure review. And I love this packaging because number one, I can just fold up the tabs. I can slide out the back. Weapons are in a weapons and hands are in a little Ziploc bag. And pull out a little blister tray, and there's my figure. So the figure, uh, there is a card that comes with the, the Kickstarter that says before adjusting any stuck joint articulation, we recommend one of the following. Either soak the figure in hot water for two to three minutes or heat any joint, especially the waist with a hairdryer on low heat. You can gently move the figure a little bit at a time, bending back and forth to loosen any stuck articulation. Please use caution and move slow as not to burn yourself or damage the figure. That's printed on both sides. And that is something I've been saying uh, since I've been doing video reviews. If you've got a, if you've got stuck articulation, don't force it. Heat it up. And it... Oh, I'm seeing his leg keeps popping off. Which is not uncommon on ball joints like that. Uh, so, articulation. We've got a barbell joint in the neck. Uh, the regular shoulder and elbow articulation the wrists are articulated they swivel and up and down on the right left uh, also up and down uh, he does have extra hands i'll go into those in a minute uh, the waist there's a swivel at the waist there's no mid torso articulation uh, ball joint hips uh, double articulation on the knees there's a mid-calf articulation right uh, at the boot line, which is clever. Uh, I like that joint that's can't even tell it's there because that's where the boot attaches. Uh, and then it has uh, rocker heels, or rocker ankles, which are really nice. Um, and no toe articulation, which is fine. Um, I really don't have a problem with no toe, toe articulation. Um, so that is the right commando. And don't worry, I'm going to do like a, a little pan around uh, here shortly. So I got four of these guys. Uh, probably leave them, leave one guy on the car just for shits and giggles. Um, and then I, I have a, I have two USS flags. Uh, one I have uh, all my like Joy Toy and Acid Rain figures displayed on, and the other one I have like it's just kind of a menagerie of 118 scale figures so i've got gi joe on there uh i've got um hellboy i've got just like anything the only thing that's not on there is star wars and that's because they're in an, another display in another room uh, let's see what he came with here a little zeploc bag that looks like a g36 rifle the sculpting is a little soft for me um i'm not not real a fan of the weapons that it comes with. Um, but to me, that's not such a huge deal. Uh, Marauder Task Force has uh, this particular gun um, with a lot more detail to it. So, and they're, you know, it's less than a buck to get that gun. So, same with the pistol. Pistol's a little soft on the sculpt. Uh, it does have a holster. Let's see how well that holster holds that gun. And it's a functional holster. Uh, it's not too bad. But it falls right out. So, you know, I mean, functional holsters are, are tricky to get right. So, uh, but it's not horrible. And then the hands he comes with. Goodness. 
you got a lot of hands here. This, including the set on the figure, one, two, three, oh, four, five different sets of hands. So he's got the trigger finger hands on his hands now. Then he's got the regular just clutching something hands. Uh, and then he's got the like open palm hand. And then he's got another set of clutching hands, which I'm guessing the articulation is either up and down or in and out. And then uh, fists, which uh, have um, joints in them as well. Uh, I don't plan on switching out articulations, quite honestly. It's cool that you have them, uh, but not really necessary for me. So he holds his weapon just fine. Uh, pistol does not really want to stay in too well, but again, not that big of a deal. Uh, the vest does come off, uh, and I like the pegs. Um, pegs just sit in holes on the vest rather than trying to peg something in or get a strap underneath. Uh, I, I, I like how the vest sit to, sits together. They did a good job on that. It's hard to get those right, and I think simpler is better, and it works really well on this figure. Well, he's got a nice little Riot logo tampo on the right sleeve. I didn't notice that before. All right, so let me kind of gear one of these guys up. And then I'll do a uh, kind of a pan around with the camera so you can get a bit better view because when the camera's focusing on me, it doesn't like to zoom in close on these guys. Um, before I do that, though, that wasn't the only thing in the box. What else did I get in that box? Uh, see, and I've spread out everything because I've done figure reviews all day long. I got, I've been doing figure reviews since I got out of bed this morning because uh, I just I had to dig into my toys. Um, I got this cool sticker sheet of uh, Riot stickers. Um, I don't know what I would use them for. I mean, if I had a... It's for a vehicle, it looks like. Um, so, yeah, if I had a custom vehicle, if I wanted to do, like, a custom Riot vehicle, uh, it came with the sticker sheet so I could do a custom vehicle for this guy, which is kind of cool. Um, I don't plan on it, but... Just the fact that I can is awesome. Uh, and I'm not going to throw these, I you know, any packaging, normally I throw it away. But I'll tell you what, um, customizing is one of the things that I always review on a figure. You know, packaging, playability, and customizability. Um, so these, these you can, you know, you, you get the measurements of these. You get into Photoshop, you make your own card, like I've shown you how to do on YouTube here on this channel. Uh, series of videos, look them up, they're there, uh, print it out, and you can cut, use these, reuse these blisters for your own custom figures, um, and they'll look fantastic in these blisters, so I'm not going to get rid of these blisters, um, even though they won't match the figures that I've already got, I'll use them for some set, subset of figures in the future at some point in time, um, so let's see, there was something else in here, oh yes, that's what else was in here, was a second free figure. Uh, and this is definitely a Snake Eyes knockoff. Uh, it's all one color. There's no, the eyes aren't painted. It, it kind of looks like a prototype, quite honestly. It came with a set of goggles. Uh, he's got a shoulder holster that's uh, functional. The holster holds like a, it's kind of like a snub nose P38 maybe, or a Walther PPK. Um, and then he comes uh, with the same like Colt pistol that the uh, Riot Commando did. Uh, and then a M4, M203 kind of combo with a scope. Again, this the sculpt on the weapons is a little soft, but considering I probably have 50 of these, of some sort of uh, M4 with an M203 just sitting in a bin somewhere, uh, I really couldn't care less about the, the detail on the weapons. Um, just between elite forces and Mar um, Marauder Task Force, there's, there's, weapons are not an issue. Um, I'm debating whether or not using this for a fig, uh, custom, because this is, uh, the plastic is nice and soft, the joints are, are very nice, 
Um, they're not too tight. Uh, it would need very little work to uh, use this as a base for a figure. Uh, the only issue that I have with this particular figure is uh, he did get a little bubble on the side of his head when they uh, mold and cast the head. Uh, so it it is a, a little split um, on the side. It's really hard to tell there, but you can tell he looks like he's got a tumor on, growing on the side of his head. Uh, but for a free figure, I can't really complain. Uh, and it did come with a little card and boy if that isn't v1 snake eyes art i don't know what it is uh it is midnight commando uh i can't really read that it's pretty small let me take it out of the package there america's premier strike force to fight worldwide injustice and tyranny uh plus eagle force bio cart on the back art by stephen butler stephen you did a pretty good job on that that, that looks really nice uh Code name or name, Midnight Classification Commando, Country of Origin, uh, United States. Summary report: The man known as Midnight grew up in the rural farmlands of the Midwestern Plains, raised in an isolated, raised in isolation by a family of preppers, who strove to remain off the grid. He learned at an early age to rely on only himself. <coughs> His parents would regularly depart for. The wilderness to operate with local survivalists leaving him alone on the farm when he turned 15 his parents left for one of these retreats and simply never returned he never told the authorities he simply continued to live his life and eventually joined the army rangers the moment he became 18. without his black mask midnight is open engaging and friendly but once the mask is on that all goes out the window and he becomes a ruthless machine Operating in the Shadows, and that is a quote from Captain Eagle. So there's the bio card. Uh, again, it, it's the eyes aren't painted, so it looks more like a test figure than like an actual figure. Um, it's still kind of cool, though, for what it is, for, which is free. Me and free are old friends, man. We go way back. The goggles are a little tight on the head. But yeah, you, you put those goggles down and it's, man, it's definitely an homage to the V1 Snake Eyes, uh, which is pretty cool. So let me set up the figure here and I'll do a quick pan around the figure so you can see it a little bit better. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. I'm still a little jet lagged and I've been doing uh, marathon videos for like um, seven since 7.30 and it's about almost four now. So hang on a second. All right, so there is the right commando. So it's kind of like uh, maybe a Cobra Viper, kind of like maybe Cobra Alley Viper too. A bit higher than the peon, but I really like the looks of it. too fancy but it's still pretty cool the articulation is really nice on these let me turn it around and see if i can get him to stand up it's kind of hard to do with one hand here i'll just hold them so you can see all right so yeah there you go that is the riot commando from the eagle force kickstarter line all right let me uh Flip this back around and we'll finish this off. So once again, I'd like to thank, uh, thank Bill uh, for just like hanging in there and, and getting these out to the fans. Uh, I know there's a lot of Eagle Force fans out there that have been waiting for this again for a long time. We didn't think we were, this was going to see the light of day. And I know Bill went through a lot of shit to get this done. Um, it took a lot of shit from a lot of people. So hats off to him. Congratulations for getting it done. <coughs> these are are really nice figures. Um, the articulation is smooth. The, they seem really nice. I I think I think if this I think this would have really been a hit had it come out um, on time. How it will do when it finally does hit retail, I don't know. Hard to say. I'm hoping that it does really well though, um, because I do plan on picking up another one or two of these figures. 
um, because, and seeing where they go with this. Uh, Fresh Monkey, www.freshmonkeyfiction is where you'll find those. Again, the Eagle Force stuff should be uh, available on their website in July, according to their website. No price point set, nothing's up there. Well, there is some stuff up there, but the, the figures aren't up there themselves yet uh, because he's busy uh, filling uh, Kickstarter pre-orders. So happy to have backed that Kickstarter and happy to have this in hand finally. Um, I don't think I have anything else, much else to say about that. So, uh, as usual, all that fun social media stuff, like, share, subscribe, and comment below. Uh, I do get back to everybody's comments. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, stay tuned because I have a whole bunch of other videos coming out for uh, uh, figure reviews for Joy Toy stuff. And if you got suggestions for uh, other videos, give me a holler. Let me know. Let me see what I can do about that. Thanks for watching.